Hi everyone and welcome back to World of Yohio. Today we're going to talk about my creative process. Let's get into it. So I got a lot of questions about my creative process, especially how I go about making my music. So I thought I'd talk a little bit about that in today's episode. It will be a bit hard to explain though, since I'm so used to the process that I don't really think about what I'm doing anymore, but I'll try to break it down for you as good as I can. So I started playing piano when I was six years old. My parents put me in a private class once a week just to see if I had any interest in music. I didn't really enjoy my classes and I never did my homework. I wasn't really that interested, but I wasn't bad at playing either. I wrote my first melody shortly after I started playing, but my passion wasn't really there yet. It changed a bit when my dad started teaching me stuff by the classical composer Bach instead of the boring children's songs I had to play during classes. Now it started to get fun. I guess I needed something more challenging to start really enjoying it. After that, I started playing the guitar when I was 11 years old. And from then on, I was 150% dedicated to the path of becoming a professional musician. I didn't really do anything else but practicing and writing songs. I'd found my passion and what I really wanted to do in life. And here I am, 13 years later, still doing just that. I've always been a very creative person. Before I discovered that music was the path I wanted to pursue, I used to draw a lot. That was my first real passion, drawing. I've barely been drawing at all since I started playing guitar, so my drawing skills have decayed over the years. That's completely fine though, since I don't have any ambitions when it comes to drawing in any professional way. I still find it enjoyable, but I'm not planning on making it a part of my profession. I also used to play around a lot with 3D animation. This also before I discovered my passion for music. I could sit for hours with the 3D software, trying out stuff and animating short clips. I watched a lot of tutorials back then. I actually wanted to be a 3D character designer or animator for Pixar or work with developing video games. Now it didn't turn out that way, but that early period of my creativity actually played a big role in how I approached music as well. So how does my creative process look like? Well, let's make making music the main topic here, since that's what I do most. When I'm writing a song, I almost always start with the music. Everything depends on the song, of course, but most of the time I start out with composing the music before anything else. So if the song has guitar in it, I've probably started out with the guitar parts first. So a usual session for me is just playing around on my guitar until I come up with something I like. Then I record part by part. So if I come up with something I'd like as an intro, I record the guitars to that first, then program the drums. After that, I usually re-record the guitars to the drums so they get tighter than just doing it to the click. When I got that down, I usually sit down with my guitar again to come up with something for the verse or the chorus. It doesn't really matter which of them comes first. So for example, if the chorus comes to me first, I record that the same way as the intro. So I start with the guitar and then program the drums. Then I sit down to come up with something for the verse. If I feel stuck while trying to figure something out using the guitar, I usually change instrument. So then I start playing on the keyboard instead to see if something pops up. If I still feel stuck, I'll pick up the bass instead or just start with the drums and try to figure something out from that. When I've composed all the parts of the song and the structure is done, I start thinking about the vocal melody or top line, as it's called in the songwriting world. Remember that this is still just the foundation of the song, so it's still in a very basic stage of production. But it doesn't really matter yet, since I'm still thinking about the top line. For me, the top line for the verse usually pop up very naturally. So when I have the melody for the verse, I record that part using na-na-na syllables, since I don't have the lyrics yet. And then I just figure out each part of the song until all the melodies are done. Now we're starting to have a demo version of the song, a rough idea of how it's going to turn out in the end. So when the top lining is done, I start working on the details of the arrangement and production of the song. I start adding violins, piano, synths and effects. The small details that make the song what it is in the final production. 
When that's somewhat done, I usually write the lyrics. This is what takes the longest time for me. It doesn't matter if it's English or Japanese lyrics, it often takes a lot of time. I guess that's because I'm a bit of a perfectionist and it can be hard to feel that you're finished. If I don't have a proper story or theme in my mind, it's even more difficult. When I have a clear theme in mind, like My Nocturnal Serenade and Merry Go Round, for example, the lyrics come naturally. Still, I take a lot of time thinking and rewriting before deciding to record it. When the lyrics are done, I record the real vocals for the song. This includes all the backing vocals and harmonies as well, if there are any. Sometimes while recording, I change some of the melodies if I feel the need to, but most of it stays the same as my original idea. Now, when everything is recorded, I usually fine tune some of the last details of the production. I do this until I feel that nothing is missing anymore. When I'm finished with the polishing, it's time to mix the track. For those of you who aren't familiar with music production, Mixing is basically the process of balancing everything out and making sure that everything can be heard. This includes setting the volume of each instrument so that everything is crisp and clear. It sounds easy, but there's a lot of technical stuff you'll have to deal with during this process. I'll take Merry Go Round as an example. Me and my dad was mixing that track, that one song, for a week. Yes, a whole week. One mixing session is usually from evening until morning. So when we were done with the first mix, it felt like we'd done a good job. But when we got back into the studio the next day, we decided to start from scratch again. And we did that seven times. So the final result you can hear now is the process of a week of mixing. Sleepless nights, huge frustration and self-doubt. Some songs are just more difficult than others and you can never really tell which one until you get to the mixing stage. It can be a very frustrating experience to say the least, but you usually end up with something you won't have to be ashamed of. It's just a matter of hours and reworking until it's near to what you had in mind. Sometimes though, you don't really know what the problem is, why it's not sounding the way you want it to. And that's the worst case scenario. Then you just have to troubleshoot until you come up with a solution. And this can take hours upon hours, or as in the case of merry-go-round, a week. With every song you make and every mix you go through, you're always learning something new. So even if it can be difficult and frustrating at times, it's always worth it in the end if you just stick to it and don't give up. I guess this applies to life in general. So that's the most common way of making music for me. There are exceptions to this, of course. The main flow is always kind of the same, but the best songs I've composed are a bit different. Let's take My Nocturnal Serenade as one example. The chorus melody just popped up in my head while we were in the woods of northern Sweden recording the violins for Merry Go Round. Somehow the setting and atmosphere inspired my mind to come up with that, seemingly from nowhere. So I just grabbed my phone and hummed the idea so I wouldn't forget it. When we came back to our own studio, I was searching my hard drive for something and came across a several years old idea for a soundtrack I was working on. I thought the atmosphere really fit the chorus idea I had and made it the intro of the song. That's now the intro and verse of My Nocturnal Serenade. After that, I just had to puzzle it together and make the arrangement and production around it. This is usually the way my best songs are created. When I get a sudden burst of inspiration and the idea just come to me from nowhere. Merry Go Round was like that too. It all started with the chorus and I built the song from that. So every song is different. You never know when the best idea is born. For me, my best ideas usually come to me while I'm taking a shower or going for a walk. Times when my mind isn't occupied with anything in particular. I can also get inspired by doing something out of the ordinary, like taking a trip somewhere I haven't been before, or meeting someone new. It's really good for your creativity and imagination to get new impressions, whatever it may be. It challenges your mind to come up with new ideas and solutions you never thought of before. I think this is really healthy in general, to keep your mind fresh and force yourself to see things from a different perspective. It really is as simple as taking a different route home than usual. This change of environment is good for your brain. 
So there you have it. Creativity always comes in different shapes and forms, and you never know when a good idea will hit you. This doesn't mean that you should go around waiting for inspiration to come your way. Sometimes just getting yourself into a creative mode without a clue what to do can force out really good ideas. You just have to stay creative and work at it every day. Thank you for listening to this episode of World of Yohio. I hope you found it somewhat interesting, even if I just barely scratched the surface of my creative process. If you want to stay updated, you can always follow me on Instagram at Yohio and Twitter at Yohio underscore Disrain. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel as well. If you want to support my work even further, you can check out my Patreon account at patreon.com slash yohio to get exclusive content and always be the first to hear these episodes among other things with that said take care my friends i'll see you next time bye bye